What is going on, Pats Nation? You guys already know who it is. Patriots Global back here with another video. And in this one, we are going to be transitioning from OTAs here to minicamp as the New England Patriots today had their first day of mandatory minicamp. Now, before we hop into today's video, I kind of want to just let you guys know what's the difference here between OTAs and what's the difference between minicamp, right? Like Patriots Global, they're practicing last week, they're practicing now. What's the difference? Well, we are in the next phase of the offseason for each individual team. This obviously being the Patriots. We are going from OTAs to mini camp to training camp to preseason to, of course, the regular season. So we are one step closer, of course, to finally being back in football. And as each phase continues to go on, the more in-depth these practices get, right? OTAs, it's not mandatory. There's no contact. Move on to mini camp. Yeah, there's still no contact, but now it's mandatory for everybody to be there, including veterans. Then you move on to training camp, mandatory to be there, and you put on pads, you put on shells, and everything starts coming together as you transitioning, or excuse me, as you transition to real football. So in this one, we're going to be talking about the notes that were given from the Patriots first day of mandatory minicamp. This is three days. It's going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, as long as they keep them all. And of course, I'll be breaking you guys down for all of the news that we got from each of the practices. Without further ado, let's hop into today's video. All right, guys here. So let's move on with what we genuinely do. So if you're new to the channel, first off, welcome. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and everybody hit that bell notification so that you do get notified every time I post a video. And while you're at it, might as well hit the like button because it helps the channel out tremendously in more production videos like this to come. And if you're wondering what that was, yeah, Chase is uh, actually in the building today. So he's right here sitting next to me. But usually we start off with just some general notes that are not, categor not categorized into each position. After we get into the general notes, we'll start breaking down each position. So as for people that were absent today, James Robinson, no surprise there, Juju Smith-Schuster, Tyquan Thornton, Kayshawn Boutte, Trent Brown, Michael Onwenu, Lawrence Guy, Quandre Mosley, and Tay Hayes. First off, several of the guys that were absent today <laughs> just aren't on the team. For, for and foremost, right? We're going to be making videos on those guys, so I'm not going to break it down too much. But if you know the guys that were released, they know exactly what I'm talking about. Several guys that were absent were reported absent today weren't there because they're just not under contract with the team anymore. As for Juju Smith-Schuster, he's in the building. He's talking with Mac Jones. He's still going through the playbook, just not physically. He apparently has been dealing with an injury, which is why we haven't seen him yet. Tyquan Thorne out yet again. Yet again, and this is something that we saw towards the end of OTAs. Sounds like he is dealing with an injury. Um, that is something that we do want to monitor going forward. Kayshawn Boutte, a guy who really hasn't made his name hurt a whole lot, and when he has, it's been more negative than it has been positive. He's got to get back on the field and start showcasing himself if he's going to make the roster. The kind of race, if you will, between Kayshawn Boutte and Demario Douglas isn't much of a race right now, and that guy is definitely Demario Douglas. Um, Trent Brown, he's not here today because he just missed a flight. That's that's literally the reasoning. Of course, of course, it had to happen to Trent Brown, right? I'm um, a guy that some people think is on the outside looking in. I think, unfortunately, maybe in any other year, he would be on the outside looking in. But I think we need Trent Brown on this team because we don't have any other true veterans. He is our best offensive lineman other than Michael Awenu at this current point. So he, he does have to stay on the team. Um, but he ended up missing his flight. Why he decided to get it like the day of, the day before um, mandatory minicamp, I don't know, but he missed his flight or not missed it, but it um something with the weather happened and and his flight got delayed, so he wasn't able to make it. Michael Wenu dealing with the injury, Lawrence Guy dealing with contract disputes, which I'll make an entire video on about that. As for guys that returned, Riley Reef returns, Matthew Judon returns, Josh Uche returns, Devon Godchow returns, Therese Hall, Jonathan Jones, Jalen Mills, and rookie Bryce Beringer. Now, for the most part, you hear the guys that are turning, you say, we're back in a mandatory minicamp. Guys that have to be there are finally back. This is what you like to see. Obviously, great to see guys like, you know, Jalen Mills, Jonathan Jones, um, and, and just Judon, of course, being back into the fold. But Bryce Berenger, thank you for finally coming back. You need to be there because right now you're probably losing the punter battle after having a great first day, but then just not showing up. As for guys that were limited, interesting, Antonio Mafia, our rookie guard, it seems like he peaked or, or kind of tore, not tore something, but he's in with some type of injury that occurred during OTA. So he was 
limited. Obviously, Marte Mapu still limited. Cody Davis still limited. A lot of guests for the New England Patriots in the building for day one of mandatory minicamp. I said this on my OTA videos day one is that you'll love to see some of these guests come in because they're working hands on with some of these other guys and helping give um, some leadership and mentoring roles, even though they're not actually playing with the team or not actually on the field. When you have guys like James White in here today, LeGarrette Blunt, Aaron Dobson, um, Devin McCourty, James Franklin, and other Penn State coaches like the Patriots players should have gotten the most out of this, these possibilities, whether it's James White um, helping these young running backs in Pierre Strawn and Kevin Harris, even LeGarrette Blunt, Aaron Dobson also being back as of late. LeGarrette Blunt and Aaron Dobson also um, got into coaching, I think, a year ago. Maybe this year they got into coaching. So maybe guys down the line that do come back to coach for the Patriots. Stephen McCourty obviously coming back. Um, it seems like maybe trying to still have that leadership and mentoring role for these younger guys and these newer guys on the team to help build that new culture despite a lot of these veterans and key players for us over the last couple of decades not obviously being here. Now, today, there was a lot of work on the short to intermediate passing game. No surprise here. That's probably what the Patriots are going to be operating in the majority of the time offensively this upcoming season. Now, Keon White, our rookie defensive lineman, did get checked out today by trainers during 11-on-11 drills. And afterwards, he just had to watch the rest of practice. He didn't end up going back into practice, but he did stay on the field and just watch. But he did watch with his helmet off. Later on, he did with, he did speak with media, so that usually is a good sign that he will be okay overall. Moving on to each position here, quarterbacks Mac Jones went uh, excuse me for eleven on elevens. Mac Jones went ten for twelve. Bailey Zappi went ten for thirteen, and Trace McSorley went four for five. Seven on sevens, Mac Jones went twenty one for twenty one, a perfect perfect twenty one for twenty one. While Bailey Zappi went nine for twelve, and McSorley went four for seven. Now, Mac Jones today also hit Kendrick Bourne on a deep connection against an all-out blitz. It really seems like Mac Jones and Kendrick Bourne are getting back on the same page. That's what you like to see, and this is exactly why, although it seems like you know Bill Belichick and some of the Patriots coaches aren't very fond of Kendrick Bourne, we the fans and the quarterback himself has a great connection with Kendrick Bourne, which is exactly why you have to get him implemented. And if you're able to get him implemented this year, exactly why he's a guy that should be sticking around long term, at least probably as good as gone, unfortunately, after this year. Now, Mac Jones did, although the stats did look good, he did throw two interceptions during two minute drills. He was what was reported as pretty animated during those drills as it was supposed to be more of a walkthrough pace. But the defense was playing at a high tempo like they always do. No days off is basically the mentality that they're going through. Um, and just overall, it wasn't the best of days for the Patriots quarterbacks when it comes to Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi, just not a great day for them um, when it came to 11 on 11s, even though they did have overall some pretty good statistics. Uh, Bailey Zappi did get a couple more reps day with the regular first team towards the end of practice. Does that mean anything? No, but some of you want to think that there is a quarterback battle, so I'm sure you want to know about that and you'll try to take something away from it. Just something to take away. Um, no news on the running backs after James Robinson was released. That's very unfortunate. I would love to see how these younger guys are doing. As for the wide receivers, the outside perimeter wide receivers for the Pats today, keep in mind, multiple guys out, was Devontae Parker, Kendrick Bourne, Cunningham, and Rally Webb. Those were your outside perimeter wide receivers. As for the guys that are playing inside at the slot position, it was Trey Nixon, Demario Douglas, our new UDFA Lee, um, and then also Ty Montgomery, he's been working a lot more with the wide receivers for the Patriots more than he has been as a running back. And now I don't think the Patriots are going to switch him to a wide receiver if he makes the overall team, but I think he's going to be that third down back. He's going to be the receiving back for you. He's going to be that next James White. Like he was supposed to be last year before getting injured, which is why they're trying to get him as many reps at the wide receiver position as possible. Now, Devontae Parker, he's continuing to look great in practice, look great for us last year. Looked great for us in practice this time last year also, and is returning to himself the exact same way he did this time last year because he today made a nice one-handed catch on a go route against Isaiah Bolden. Now, Kendrick Bourne also had a touchdown in 11-on-11s. 11 Kendrick Bourne, though, did have to run a lot today because of a false start and was promptly replaced with the starters um, afterwards for just a brief period of time. Now, Ty Montgomery also was continued to, like I said, be used as um, a wide receiver, but that's not something I would necessarily 
use as as a takeaway like i said before like he will not go and count against the amount of the wide receivers the Patriots put on the final roster. He still will be counted as a running back. And then Trey Nixon hauled in a 50-yard touchdown from Chase McSorley. It looks like Trey Nixon is in off-season form right now. This is where every single Patriots fan goes off the rails, thinking that this is the year Trey Nixon pops out for us as a former seventh-round pick. And, and no, he just always looks good around this time and then never is able to continue it as preseason and training camp comes along. Uh, moving on here to the tight ends, there was a lot. There was a lot of two tight end sets today. This is something that we've been seeing, seeing all offseason, but especially in um, practice that have been open to media and our first day of minicamp. There were just a lot of 12 personnel sets today. Both Hunter Henry and Mike Gesicki were heavily involved today. They combined for a total of 12 catches alone in team drills. Hunter Henry also hauled in a nice deep ball with Jalen Mills in tight coverage. It was said that Jalen Mills couldn't have done anything Anything better. Jalen Mills had tight coverage. He got his hands close. He just wasn't able to get his hands overall on the ball. It was perfect accuracy by Mac Jones and a perfect catch by Hunter Henry. Looks like those two are getting back on pace from that 2021 form. Now moving on to the offensive line, like I said, several guys out, but at the end of the day, practice still goes on. Now this was the offensive line, the starting offensive line from left to right. You had Calvin Anderson. You had Cole Strange. David Andrews, you had Murray back at right guard. Very interesting. And then McDermott over at right tackle. Super interesting that you didn't see City Sal there at tackle or City Sal at guard at all. I think the fact that we haven't seen City Sal at guard whatsoever, whether that's today in minicamp, whether that's in OTAs or just in general this offseason, probably tells us that the Patriots alone view City Sal when they drafted him as a tackle, and that's what it's going to be for them. He's not going to be a guard, not going to try him at guard. He's just going to be a tackle. But interesting that Murray's been getting those um, reps at right guard with some of these other guys out. Now, you might be wondering, where's Riley Reef? Well, Riley Reef did see some action at left tackle today with Trent Brown absent. Just overall wasn't heavily in the mix. I'd probably guess that that's just, you know, trying to ease your veterans back into things. Not too much overall to take over for that. Now, before we do continue on today's video, I do want to give a massive, massive shout out to the sponsors of this channel over at FanDuel. Guys, right now, make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now, new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet does not hit. Great thing that I love about FanDuel is their new promotions. Every single day, they got new ones to help you get some easy and quick cash. The other thing I love about them is their safe and secure app. Whether you're using your mobile device or you're just going online to use FanDuel, you can be 100% secure and confident that your money is going to be used and taken care of properly. The best part, though, is that you get paid out instantly, unlike some other betting apps with FanDuel. As soon as your bet hits that you placed and you win, you get paid out the second, the second that that bet is officially won. So no sitting there refreshing the page or whatnot. You get your money right away, guys. There's no better place to bet on all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash Boston and get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's FanDuel.com slash Boston. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. Little disclaimer here, guys. Make sure you are 21 in your select state. Make sure that your state does allow online wagering. Your first online real money wager only of a $10 deposit is required. Refunds are issued as a non-withdrawable bonus bet that do expire after 14 days. Restrictions do apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino. If you or somebody knows a gambling problem, call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash your state. So it would be one, excuse me. So it would be uh, fanduel.com slash PA. If you live in Pennsylvania, it'd be fanduel.com slash NJ. If you live in New Jersey, and so on, so forth. Or visit www.1800Gambler.net. So we talked just now about the offense. Now we're going to be moving on to the defense to cap off today's practice. So as for the defensive line, Guys who would have had sacks in, of course, there's no contact. But if there was contact, the guys who would have had sacks today, Matthew Judon would have one, Christian Barmore would have had one. And then as for pass breakups, Dietrich Wise would have had a pass breakup, and Josh Uche would have had a pass breakup. Moving on to the linebackers, Marte Mapu standing out again. He would have had a pass breakup today, and Mac Wilson would have had a pass breakup. Juwan Bentley would have had a sack. And then for those wondering, how's Marte Mapu continually 
are continuously being used as move on from OTAs to minicamp. Is anything changing? And so far, no, he's being utilized the exact same way he was throughout OTAs. He's seen looks at linebacker and he is still seeing looks at safety. One thing I will say is that when he is playing safety, the looks that he's getting is mostly next to Kyle Duggar. So one little neat tidbit there to take away. Moving on to the cornerbacks. As for pass breakups, Jonathan Jones back in the mix. He had a total of two pass breakups. Christian Gonzalez had one. Jack Jones had one. And Isaiah Bolden also getting some looks. He had one. This is something I told you guys in those draft videos was that look out for Isaiah Bolden. This is a guy that as a seventh round pick, I liked and I told you he has more ability on defense, whether that's at cornerback or whether it's at safety to actually try to push for a roster spot a lot more than something like a mere speed does. You know, when you look at Isaiah Bolden, he brings the size, he brings the speed to be able to match up and he brings the versatility. And so far he's actually been getting some, some genuine looks here at corner, you know, behind guys like John Jones, Christian Gonzalez, and Jack Jones. He's a guy that's sticking around with that special teams ability. He could be a dark horse uh, roster spot. So Isaiah Bolden, I got to look out for as you know, we continue on mini camp and then head into training camp. Now, with Jonathan Jones being back today, where was he playing? Surprisingly, John Jones being back was not thrusted back into um, an outside perimeter cornerback role that we were used to seeing in OTAs. He was actually working a lot in the slot today, and he was working with the uh, starters when working in the slot. So again, Still some question marks on what's the whole cornerback group going to look like from CB1 to CB2 to who is going to be your starting slot cornerback. Now, Christian Gonzalez, say Patriots rookie first round pick, continuing to run with the starters, say looking like the Patriots overall main outside um, number one cornerback on the perimeter. And the reason that you're not hearing Christian Gonzalez's name a lot is because he's not being targeted a lot, right? Like you hear guys like Jonathan Jones with a couple pass breakups or, or Jack Jones or Isaiah Bolden, right? Because those guys are being targeted. Christian Gonzalez just isn't getting the ball thrown his way, which at the end of the day, that's not a bad thing. Like with Christian Gonzalez, you not hearing his name as long as he's at practice is more of a good thing than it is a bad thing. Because if you're a cornerback, if, if your mode of a cornerback is just a lockdown, shut down cornerback, shut your man down, which is what Christian Gonzalez is, then you don't want to hear their name. You not hearing their name is a good thing. As where, let's say that you're a JC Jackson or an Xavier Howard, you're a ball hawk. Those are the types of guys that you want to hear them their name. You want to hear that they're making plays. So it's actually very good coming out, hearing that Christian Gonzalez is rolling with the starters. He's been at practice, but you're just not hearing his name because the ball is just not being thrown his way, whether it's Mac Jones, whether it's Bailey Zappi or Trace McSorley. So I think it's actually some low-key good news coming out about the Patriots' uh, rookie first-round pick. Now, this one did surprise me. Marcus Jones, a guy that we all thought was going to take over for Jonathan Jones as the Patriots' main slot cornerback, saw a lot of action today at cornerback, rolling with the starters, but he was seeing the most action that we've seen so far, not rolling as a slot cornerback, but was mainly working as a perimeter cornerback. Now, keep in mind, Marcus Jones sitting at 5'9", 5'10". He's a guy that you would think would be mainly and pretty much exclusively a slot receiver in the NFL, but is getting opportunities on the outside. Looked good last year, but is this a guy that you want consistently playing on the outside? You know, it, when we play the Eagles week one, is he a guy that you want going up against A.J. Brown or, or Devontae Smith? No, probably not. Could he do it at a decent level? Sure, but at, at some point, doesn't matter how talented you are, that height advantage to disadvantage is going to take over, but he was rotating in and out as a perimeter cornerback today with Jack Jones. Now that was very interesting and something that we definitely have to continue to look at as time goes on. Interception today, not a whole lot for the safeties, but Kyle Duggar had one and Adrian Phillips had one. Safeties are continuing to make plays for us in the backfield. And as for special teams, there's pretty much nothing. We didn't hear anything about the kicker position today. Not a whole lot about the punters, nothing in depth. But what was said about the punters was that it was a pretty even battle today. That's all. That's the only thing that came out about special teams guys today was that for the punters, it was a pretty um, even battle. So unfortunately, that doesn't move the needle a whole lot for Bryce Beringer. Right now, I'd still give the edge right now to Cordless Waitman just because he's been at practice more. He showcased himself more and he's looked very solid. Bryce Beringer definitely beat him day one, but then wasn't showing up for a few days. 
why we don't know. So I think if Berenger is going to take over that role, he's got to get back in practice and he's got to start showcasing himself a lot more. But what are your guys' thoughts from Patriots day one of mandatory minicamp? Let me know in the comment section below. Remember to also leave a big like on this video and of course, subscribe to the channel for all of your New England Patriots news. Like always, I appreciate you guys for watching and never forget, go Pats.